Good morning, everybody. I'm Meredith Harris with the Marlboro Economic Development Corporation, and it is my pleasure to welcome you this morning to our 14th episode of Exploring Economic Development with MEDC. Uh, last week, we had Jason Pallich from the 495 Metro West Partnership with us to talk about the importance of building relationships regionally and uh, how it is important to work with your neighbors. Today, we have our special guest uh, for episode 14, Superintendent Mike Bergeron, uh, to talk to us a little bit about school to business and how MEDC works with MPS to really build connections in our business community with our students. So with that, I'm going to introduce my co-host, Jill Morin. Good morning, Jill. Good morning, Meredith. How are you? I'm so excited. You're wearing orange today? I'm wearing, it's, it's, a, it's a shade of orange. Is that because Panther Pride? Panther Pride. All right. Panthers eat it. hawk meat. It was, a, <laughs> it was a cheer thing they did one year. I used to coach dance. At MPS? At, at Ma, yeah, Marlboro High Public who, Schools. Who were the hawks? Hudson Hawks. Oh, Pan. okay. So the cheerleaders do this one thing, and it was my favorite thing. I, I always wanted to be a cheerleader. You know, I really am at a loss for words, which doesn't <laughs> typically happen. <laughs> I really appreciate you doing that this morning. You're welcome. <laughs> welcome, everyone. We're so glad you joined us on uh, YouTube, on Facebook, maybe LinkedIn. We're yeah, we're sure. hopeful that LinkedIn Ho is working hopefully. today. We'll see. Yep. Uh, if not, we'll, we'll share that out later. But we're happy that you guys are here. It's really exciting. 14th episode. We've been doing this since the kind of the beginning of the year. I believe so. Right. I was just saying before we turned the cameras on that you kind of had to twist my arm to do it, and it's ended up being one of my favorite things that we do. It's fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So, so um, if you're catching this on the replay, make sure you still comment. If you have any questions, if you have any ideas, if you have like a guest that you're thinking, oh man, this would be really great to bring this person on, or any topics you want us to discuss, we let us know. We would love to have it, absolutely. Yeah. And we're also going to be sharing this on <clears throat> WMCT, so there, our phone number and our email address is down there, so you can join the conversation that way too. And we've had a few emails with great questions, and so we'd love to hear from you. So if you're watching us, let me just give join us a call. In. Jo join in. Join in. Join in. Join in. It's fun. Oh, so, wait. One of our one of our most. Who am I going to say joined us right now? Mike Gossing well, or no. Spencer Geary. Spencer Geary. Right. <laughs> Good morning, Number one fan. Spencer. Number one fan. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Spencer. Yeah. So with that, we're yeah. going to introduce our special guest on a very special day, the first day of school. <laughs> Superintendent Mike First Bergeron. day of school. Good morning. Yay. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me in our uh, socially distanced podcast. Here we are. Yes. I do appreciate that. And, Not a problem. Uh, it is the first day of school. I didn't know Meredith. that. Meredith. Yeah, I didn't know that. Well, I, you'll know soon. <laughs> you'll know soon. And I, But I appreciate you having me on. Uh, hey, we're happy to have you in that you were able to make time for us today. I'm sure it's a busy week, a busy day. But I have to kind of give you a little bit of a jab. What happened to no school before Labor Day? Wait, so, back in my day, we didn't go to school before is, Labor Day. Isn't that the way? We all have these like <laughs> memories of what school is and what school isn't. Yep. And some of them are real and some of them are not. Are not. <laughs> but at the same time, I love starting school before Labor Day, so that way we can get out a little bit earlier in June. Right. That's that's always my feeling. Right. But I get it. I know. Labor it's Day like is one that natural things, right? time where you're like, okay, now it's time to start school. You're not allowed to start school until Labor Day has come and gone, but that's right. not actually the case. Right. Well, yeah. we could, but then we'd be in school in July. I don't <laughs> yeah. think anybody, don't think wants, anybody that. wants that. No, speaking no. as a former teacher, we don't not want a good idea. No. It's it's also kind of nice to have school before Labor Day because you get like as a teacher, you get to be like, all right, here's the syllabus, here's the expectations. You don't have all your school stuff. That's okay. This is what we need to do. Like it gives the teachers and the students a little bit of time to get you get know it get together. the nerves out yeah. and, and and figure out where their locker is maybe how to open it yeah whatever that's maybe not yeah. <laughs> it's fine. um so that's it's nice to kind of have an easy entry and then have have a day off go to the downtown marlboro labor day parade and yeah. then plug for that the a couple days and we're, what we're doing this year is we have wednesday and thursday we have school friday and monday are obviously off so yeah. what it does is really gives you two days to get reacclimated hopefully gives a weekend for the parents to help them get their reacclimated to their <laughs> new the sleep schedules. Forgot. Yeah, that too. Yeah. That's yeah. an important one. You got to yeah. get up for school. Yeah. And uh, we're lucky this year we had uh, some support from the school community. We were able to move the high school starting time to 8 a.m. Oh, great. So we yeah. had, that's an extra hour of sleep for a lot of kids in the community. That's awesome. Um, so I saw a lot more bright, fresh faces this morning over at the high school. We're very excited for that. That's great. Um, but yeah, the, the, I agree with Jill. I think the two days kind of gets you back into it. Yeah. And then after Labor Day, having a long weekend, that four-day week doesn't back. feel as long. Yeah. So yeah. It, it gets kids back You're into right. school. So nice. Jenny Cataldo says parents love 
the kids go back in August. I I can imagine yeah. that that is a, a plus. And yeah. also she recognizes the let's get the kids out in, earlier, in earlier in June. Yeah, that's a yeah, good idea. For sure. So, Mike, you already made a few rounds this morning, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you went to Good Now over to the uh, high school. Over to the high school and uh, Good Now just to check in on things and uh, just very pleased with ev- how everything's going. Um, you know, the buses actually did a great job this morning, so we're, we're very excited about that as well. Um, pretty much um, 8.03, 8.04, we were having most of our buses in at the high school. And I was over at Good Now about 9.03, most of the buses were in, which for a first day is That's pretty awesome. good. That's awesome. That, and That's and awesome. we might have, you know, we might have a couple of things we got to work on, as yeah. we always do. Yeah, so. of course. If you have any faint parents or anybody have any issues, please reach out to Steve Phelan, Transportation Coordinator. Mm-hmm. Perfect. He can help with that. And I know yeah. you guys, are you still hiring too? Weren't you oh, guys hiring absolutely. a lot of those yep. positions? Yeah. Yep. I'd say right now our, our, our number one, uh, you know, it, what we're looking for the most is going to be bus drivers. Mm-hmm. And that is through a contractor, North <coughs> Reading Transportation. So if you go on our website, we have some information. It's also been in our social media. Mm -hmm. I would also say behavior technicians um, and also long-term subs. So if we're looking, if you're, you know, getting back to school, you've got your kids off to school and you're looking to come in and sub in the classrooms, we would love to have you. That's a great, So please, please come on down to the HR department and we would love to hire some substitutes to help us out. Yeah, I'd be lucky to work at MPS. It's a great, great school, great community you guys have over there. Thank yeah. you. And yeah. subbing, I think, like, subbing is different now than back in my day. You know, like, there's... <laughs> How a, many times can we say that today? <laughs> we not to feel old later. at all. Put a little thing up here. <laughs> back point, in our day. <laughs> um, but truly, like, when I was a teacher, there there is a higher expectation in terms of teachers being prepared to not be prepared or, or to be out last minute. Mm-hmm. So in terms of running a class and substituting, it's not, if, if you were intimidated by that, don't be because you there's a great support system um the the administrative assistants the secretaries everybody just really rallies around and also like the teacher next door is just great yeah it's it's i it's love a community subbing like if i had to, if a friend was out or there was a meeting and i had a prep period and i'd go over well, it's different right it's fun yeah um different so. from your every day give it a try So, all right, before we get into economic development and how we work together in the schools and that kind of stuff, can you give us a little bit about what does this year look like? You know, we're just coming through one of probably the most challenging years that I think every industry, you know, had, especially Mm -hmm. the schools that was tough for you guys. Maybe what are some things that we learned last year? What does it look like this year? You know, you said to me this morning, the kids were all excited to be back to school. That's that's awesome. Really happy to hear that. Um, So just some thoughts, anything you, you think? Sure. Sure, sure. I think, uh, you know, kind of reflecting on last year, I think we learned a lot of important lessons. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and one is obviously in-person schooling is very important. Mm-hmm. So I know that last year we did have remote schooling as an option. This year we do not have remote schooling as an option. So we're really focused on making sure that the six or six and a half hours that we have our kids every day, high quality instruction, mm-hmm. and that we are using every minute that we can. Um, you know, another thing that we learned last year was the importance of class sizes. Mm-hmm. So we, we did some, you know, innovative things. And one of them that I was really appreciative of was that all of our kindergarten, first and second grade students who wanted in-person instruction were in school every day. This was last year? Yes. That's awesome. So what we found is those, those smaller class sizes for kindergarten, first and second grade were very helpful in terms of getting our kids academically ready for the next grade. That's great. Um, So I know a lot of people have talked about this theory of learning loss Mm -hmm. and that last year was a a very difficult year and that there would be a lot of learning loss. But our data suggests that we didn't have learning loss per se. Um, We actually made progress in in many areas. That's fabulous. Um, And one I'd like to highlight, for example, would be our, our kindergarten data that we had from last year showed that our kindergarten students last year outperformed the cohort the year before. No kidding. Um, which is pretty incredible. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's something that we learn is that you just, we have to look at the data. We have to look at what the data tells us. Right. Um, so we're fortunate that we're going to be receiving quite a bit of federal funding over the next three years. And we're going to be using portions of that federal funding to uh, remediate any issues that we may find. And we're going to really work with our basically our school principals are going to run that Mm -hmm. and they're going to be able to determine which students need the most assistance Mm -hmm. and how can we give them that assistance. 
Um, and then with the rest of the money for, for our federal grants that are coming our way, we're really going to try to invest in the HVAC systems in our schools, mm -hmm. specifically the Kane and Jarek schools. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're the ones that um, they had rehabs on the buildings in the early uh, 2000s or late 90s. Um, and with that, we're also going to be looking to do a statement of interest for the richer school. Okay. So we know what's ahead of us in yeah. terms of work. Um, and we're just trying to parse out how we're going to get all of it done with the time that we have, That's uh, always which is the always, challenge, right? always the challenge. <laughs> right. um, but I, I think one of the most important things um, we learned is the consistency. Yeah. So what we're going to really strive for this year is just to be as consistent as possible with um, our kids and, and just make it as good of a school year as we can. That's awesome. As always, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what Absolutely. you guys are always doing. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I think pe some people might be watching and saying, okay, so how does the school fit into economic development, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so the easy answer to that is workforce development, pipeline building, you know, those kinds of things. So a lot of the work that we do together, and it's been more so over the last couple of years, really trying to focus on this idea of how do we make sure that our students are prepared to go to work in the companies that we're bringing in to the, into the community. And I remember, Jill, I think the first time I met you was at STEM week a couple of years ago. I think it was t 2018, yeah. um, but was on a panel and I kept beating this drum of, I honestly feel like a lot of people in our community drive by these big buildings and they see these companies and all these logos and all these things that are going on, but they don't realize either A, what's going on inside yeah. those buildings, and then B, they don't understand that there are opportunities available not only for themselves, but also for their kids to, to c come out of school, maybe go on to college, but maybe not go on to college right away, maybe go into those companies right out of school, and then the company will pay for you to go to college to get the training that you need. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that I certainly didn't really understand until being in the role here. Um, and so that's something that me personally have, have wanted to work on. And I think we've done, you know, we've made some, some progress. We've got a long way to go. Um, but I think sometimes people don't realize how important it is to have your business community involved with your schools. And so that's why we really wanted to bring you on today to kind of talk about that. Mm -hmm. Again, pipeline building, workforce development, how do we work together and make sure that people in the community know that we, we are focused on this. It's something that we're doing. And so Mike, if you could talk a little bit about some of the small things, you know, and then we'll get into some of the big things, but I mean, every day you could probably walk through the schools um, and see some of the things that our companies are doing and participating with our kids and doing experiments and all kinds of stuff. So any thoughts about that or things that people might not know are going on behind those doors? Well, I, I think first, uh, thank you for your work on that because <clears throat> a lot of times the school district, um, we don't always know who to contact in mm -hmm. some of these companies. And, and we appreciate that MEDC opens doors for us to be able to have these conversations. I think what the public should know is our kids have unbelievable opportunities in Marlboro. Absolutely. So I, I think there's this feeling that when you, you graduate from MPS, you're moving on to college, and then you're looking for jobs in Boston or another metro area, but there are so many great opportunities in Marlboro. Right here. Right here in Marlboro right. um, that are just fantastic salaried opportunities for, for students that they can make relationships with these companies, long-term relationships, right. and then really be a known quantity when right. these people are hiring for their jobs. And you're talking world-class companies. Correct, correct. Yeah, and you know, yeah. We just really appreciate, so everything from as, as simple as having folks from, from local companies come into our classrooms and do demonstrations to talk about their jobs. Mm -hmm. We've been very, very lucky and fortunate that um, a lot of the local companies, like Boston Scientific, for example, mm -hmm. has been very generous with their grant giving. Mm -hmm. And almost every single school committee meeting I did last year, there was a grant from a local company awesome. to the Marlboro Public Schools that were helping right. us um, buy some, some items that n traditionally may not be in our budget. Mm -hmm. um, some good examples was a lot of the work that we got done for our STEM classrooms mm -hmm. at the elementary and the middle school level. Um, they, you know, we were fortunate to get 3D printers. Um, awesome. we, we just really were able to get a lot of equipment to really get the kids excited right. about these STEM careers. Um, and beyond that, a lot of our kids actually do internships with these companies mm -hmm. in the summer. And what we're really looking to expand, and I think the, the, the real big piece that we're looking to do, is get work-based opportunities during the school year 
for our juniors and seniors at Marlboro right, High. Right, right. That, I think, is the difference. So w let's just jump into it, right? I mean, mm -hmm. so that is probably the biggest initiative that we've been, you know, working on over the past, I would say, maybe a year or maybe even more. Mm -hmm. um, but this idea of work-based learning. And I think, Jill, don't we have a video queued up Mm -hmm. um, that I'd love to show. It just talks a little bit about Patriot Ambulance. They, they were kind of the first ones to do this program, but let's just roll the video so people can get um, on the same page of what we're talking about. All right. That's a heart attack. These five students are a part of a first of its kind program at Marlboro High School. MHS and Patriot Ambulance teamed up to offer an EMT training course to senior students. With this type of opportunity, kids are actually applying what it is that they're learning. MHS is one of the only public schools in Massachusetts to offer a program like this. Uh, they are few and far between, so we are one of the few that exists. Their program runs the entire school year, teaching students everything they need to know and more. Dispatching skills, emergency medical dispatching, that it flows right into what they're currently doing, which is a full um, program on EMT. Students train five days a week, completing more than 250 hours. In addition to the classroom, students will spend time interning at the police and fire departments and Patriot Ambulance. Once students complete training and pass the National Registry exam, they will be EMT certified, all while receiving their high school diploma. They will have an EMT certification where they can operate in any National Registry state or Massachusetts. Training students young at the high school level helps solve a national problem. It's so important. We have a national shortage of EMTs and paramedics. Principal Riley hopes to double the program's enrollment next year. Reporting in Marlboro, Megan Parsons, WMCT News. It's awesome. That's a great opportunity. It's so, and first of all, thank you, WMCT, for letting us yes. take that and, and show that video. But my mind is consistently blown when I think about this. So again, back in my day, these types of things, this just wasn't available to us, right? So right. you're talking about students going during the work, during the school day for credit, right? They're going Absolutely. over to Patriot Ambulance. That's the, the program that's up and running right now, which we're trying to expand on. But tell us a little bit about it, Mike. You know, sure. And I think the, the biggest thing is the student has the ability to finish their high school career and get credit towards so their graduation awesome. while also earning, in this case, a certificate that's gonna gain them a lot of access right. to good paying jobs straight out of high school, which is very important. That right. That's, to me, I think, one of the most important things of this whole program. Not every kid is gonna go right into a four-year college. I didn't. Yeah. I went to night school. No kidding, really? So that, yeah, this, this is, so this is uh, you know very near and dear to my heart because I did this. I went to night school. Yep. I worked during the day and my employer helped me pay for some of my tuition. Mm. That's what we're trying to get to because not we, we don't have every single student going to a traditional four-year college. Right. We have some students who are going to be going to a community college. Mm -hmm. Some may explore night options. Yep. What we want to do is prepare them for whatever path they want to take. Right. This is a path that I believe will, will, will make them successful and be able to afford college right. through a good paying job in a local employer. Well, right. No, I, right, and I think that the key thing that you keep talking about is pathways, right? And there's different pathways for every student. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and honestly, to be able to explain to, you know, students that age, the student debt too, and what that looks like, and just having this other opportunity mm -hmm. that's available to them, I just think it's incredible. Yeah, it, yeah. it really is. And not you know every every family has to make those decisions for themselves of about course. what what they're going to be doing for college and what's the best for everyone. Right. So what we want to ma make sure that we do very clearly for students is give them as many pathways as possible to success. Right. Not every path is going to look the same. Right. So I mean, for me, when we're looking at this opportunity with the EMT program, mm -hmm. that's one pathway. Mm -hmm. What we're working on at the high school with Principal Riley, who's doing a fantastic job with this, is looking at what other pathways can we get students interested in. Yeah. The two that we can probably talk about right now, they're not fully formed out, right. but we really are excited based, about. There. One is going to be an IT certificate yep. mm -hmm. so that students who want to enter into the IT field, um, whether it be you know, software or hardware, depending on which way they want to go, that we can get students ready working in companies and right. start to see what it's going to be like. Right. Um, the other one that we're really working on right now is an education certificate as well. Mm -hmm. So we can have students either intern with us or other uh, programs like, pre for example, preschools, yep. and be able to get an experience um, whether they want to go to school for education. Right. Um, and beyond that, I would love to see something in manufacturing. Some 
yeah. because that is a huge part of what Marlboro is doing right Absolutely. now. There's a lot of companies that mm -hmm. we would love to partner with to get manufacturing um, in place. So we have we have kids who are ready straight out of high school. If they're not going to a traditional four-year college, we want them to have a good job. Right. It just opens up more doors for them, right? And it, it exposes them to something that they might not have been exposed to before. I mean, I remember being 18 years old, getting ready to graduate. You don't you don't know what opportunities are available, right? And and just sometimes being in these companies and being exposed to it, you learn so many more things, mm -hmm. you know, there's just so many more opportunities. And a lot of times when people are like, when a student graduates high school and they wanna go off and do college or live on their own, it might not be as easy or people might not be ready to jump in and seek out these opportunities. Right. Whereas if it's built into your high school education and it's just normal, it's just something, right. one of just the many things, doing. just like you can join this club, you can join this sport, you can take this. And right. Like I remember taking a music theory, an AP music theory class my senior year of high school. I'm over high, go Panthers. Um, uh -huh. Right. Was it brown? Something about hawk meat? Or? <laughs> yeah, hawk meat. <laughs> I need to stop saying that. Um, but I remember not even realizing that I was getting college credit for it. Yeah. Right. Because I was just, I was just a doing good it. music student. Right. And, oh, it was, it was, there were only five kids, I think, in that class. And I, I just took the course because it was something I was interested right. in. And I graduated high school and I was like, oh, I already finished. I have a three, right. three credits to college. It's huge. Yeah. And it, that was, and we've come so far, far since then. The number of AP right. classes that we offer, the dual, um, what do you call it? In, dual like, enrollment like, with, yeah. with our college mm -hmm. is, is a huge program. So we're working with Quinn Sigamon, and we have a great program. We actually have kids in Marlboro High taking dual credit courses. Yeah, that's and they can earn up to 12 credits yeah. towards their um, college career at Marlboro High, and we're looking to expand that. Yeah. We want as many kids as possible to be able to do that. Right. Um, and as Jill said, you know, we have, I believe, 23 AP courses at Marlboro High Incredible. beyond that. Um, so we, we really have a full, um, I guess, uh, curriculum of all these opportunities for kids. Big and menu. what we're looking to do is just make sure yeah. that no matter which way you want to go, yes. either it's college prep yeah. or whether you're looking to go into the workforce, we want to give you a pathway. Oh, that's um, awesome. And I really feel like just with all these great companies in Marlboro who have supported us, I think getting the kids being able to have a face and a name mm -hmm. with these employers is the best thing we can do for their 100%. future. They're going to get to know yeah. them. And then when the, when they're looking for employment, it's going to be a known quantity. Well, it's not yeah. so intimidating. Again, yeah. you drive by, you see the logo, but you don't really know what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. Do we have a comment? We do. We have a few. I'm going to start with this one from President Ossing. Best superintendent ever. Oh, thank you. <laughs> ever. <laughs> thank you, Love Council it. President Ossing. Thanks for joining us. Um, so um, Spencer Geary chimed in with this great comment. It's so true. He said, I have a, I have Marlboro High School. I graduated from Marlboro High School and the TV production class for the job I have now. That's awesome. You know, so he was That's able awesome. to focus on during during his just one of his classes, what? one of his electives, maybe, you know, maybe all four years or maybe just a few of the years. You can really get hands on experience in whatever you're interested in. And here it is benefiting him in his 100 percent right, full time at the at WMCT. Right. Um, also, we've got a few other comments. So wonderful to see the application of knowledge being emphasized. That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us again. And then um, we've got this. Well, we can we can probably jump back. Sure. Um, actually, we've got a comment from Valerie. As a public school registrar, these opportunities towards education and or workforce are vital Agreed. for our students. Absolutely, Valerie. 100%. Agreed. Thank you so much for your comment. So I want to go, oh, before we t go to the next subject, because we've got so much we can talk about today. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. It, we are looking for more companies to get involved. We've got a couple that we're talking to right yeah. now, um, but I think we want to continue to build that, again, build that pipeline and have more that are that are ready to get involved in this program. You're not talking a huge heavy lift for the companies, right? So no. I mean, it's a couple of students that are coming in. Um, the school pays for them to be there. Is that correct? Explain if there's that a any, bit. so for example, the, the Patriot Ambulance uh, Partnership is a good example. Mm -hmm. If there are any curricular materials that they need to get their certification and or in this example, there's a course they have to take. Yep. We subsidize the cost of that. We're not asking the companies to put forward any funds whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, what, we're, what we really want more than anything is for the companies to tell us what, what they, they need. need. Yeah. And, and that, that starts the ball rolling. So if, if they see that long term, they're going to have 
um, you know, their their HR departments are telling them we need to start building a pipeline of, of folks getting interested in this particular field. We want to help with that. Right. And, and we want to make sure that students know graduating out of Marlboro High School, there are great jobs in Marlboro. Right here. Mm-hmm. In your you don't backyard. have to move to Boston. Right. You don't have to move anywhere else. Right, right here in your backyard. You can have a great pretty jobs. sweet commute. And you, and you yes. might try <laughs> Maybe you got to get it out of your system like me. You know, you got to graduate from MHS and be like, I'm leaving this town. No, you Getting don't. Getting out there. <laughs> you end up back here, man. It's great. <laughs> right? I, I mean, it was it was a joy. to. I'm glad I got to travel a little bit. But coming back to Marlboro, there really are just so many opportunities. So many opportunities. And the community and the family and the support that you have. And people people keep an eye out for you. And, and, and when you talk about the businesses, really um, – training yes they're going to recognize those students later on when they graduate but also the confidence that you can give a young person absolutely um, being able to have that mentoring relationship and giving back yes they might be your next top employee but they also might ne- just need to hear some encouraging words from an adult that's that's doing okay in and the field that they're the, interested in exactly um, yeah, so really... you said mentoring, so I want to. That's yeah. where I want to go next. Cool. Um, but I did just want to quickly say too that it's mutually beneficial for mm-hmm. the company and the student, right? Yeah. I mean, so the the students are gaining this incredible experience, and, they, and they're going to walk away with this awesome, you know, certification or maybe just exposure. But yeah. the companies are also they're getting you know students to come in and help with work that needs to be done. I mean, mm-hmm. there's no lack. We know everybody's hiring right now. Yeah. You know, they need help, and so this is a great way for a company to partner with the schools. Um, again, for a mutually beneficial uh, program. So yeah. I'll give the pitch. Let us know if you'd like to be involved. We would love to talk to, to companies and, and get people involved in this program. It's phenomenal. So um, we'll put some information at the at the bottom yes. at the end. So you said mentorship. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, I think the pandemic brought a lot of challenges, but it also forced a lot of us to be creative and to do things differently than we had ever done them before. Um, one of the things at MEDC that we started doing differently was actually what you're experiencing right now, and it's kind of this digital marketing um, media, and we brought on Jill. Um, so Jill, we contract with Jill to do some of this video production work with us. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the cool things that we were able to do, I think, with the schools was these, we had two different series that we launched. One was the mentorship series, mm-hmm. um, which we brought in local business leaders and paired them up with Um, students or local entrepreneurs that were looking to kind of get started and I think we worked with the National Honor Society on that didn't we yes we had um, Brooke Brooke. I'm blanking on her last name yeah but yeah Brooke came in and she sat down uh, with Dr. Fernandez yep yep from um, the Childhood Garden and they Mm -hmm. talked all about the different opportunities if you're wanting to be a teacher or move into education it was it was a great just really so cool. super informative yeah in terms of all the different schools or types of schools mm-hmm. or saving money um in terms of taking out student loans just a, a, just amazing yeah and then the second series that we launched was called inside the industry and we're continuing to run that one mm-hmm. but bringing in leaders from our big companies we've had quest and Cytiva so far we're actually going to be doing with the hospital next mm-hmm. um and then we actually had the students some of the classes join in live when they were home and, and being virtual. Mm-hmm. And during a time where everybody was so disconnected, yeah. it was such a cool way to connect. And you had leaders of these world-class yeah. companies directly speaking to our student population. Yeah. That's amazing. It was incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it was I, really incredible. I feel like last year we, we made 10 years worth of technology right? pro- <laughs> progress in one year. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And you know, we were ready for it. Thank, thank goodness we had a great... Uh, infrastructure already in place so we already had our devices we already had you know everything we needed in terms of giving students hotspots or whatever they needed to be able to connect right uh, during those periods of remote learning but the the progress we made uh, internally was was pretty significant we we, uh, definitely as I like to say checked a lot of boxes in terms of our strategic plan as well (laughs) um, in terms of making progress towards our goals right um, and being able to get to that next step and and now I think it's become just a very common thing yeah that you know we use the Google Drive and we use Google Classroom and you know where to get your assignments right it's just that we you know Sometimes what happens when you're when you just have no choice, you have to learn it and you have to get good at it. Right. Be innovative and, and embra- embrace like it was almost just embrace the technology, embrace yeah. the situation at hand. Yeah. Um, and kudos to you, Jill, because a lot of that, Thanks. you know, is you, your brain power. I mean, just incredible being able to connect the students of the city with. Yeah. I mean, literally, well, you're talking te- world world class companies. Well, I keep bef- saying that, but it's before true. we did 
before we did um, the first and second episode of Inside the Industry, I chatted with some of the high school teachers I knew that would be like, you know, who do you want to hear from? What's the what's a good time? I think we scheduled it at a time when when um, it was Jennifer Belial. I can't remember what class it was. There was an economics class or a marketing class or something like that. But she was like, all right, it would be best if it started at 930. And so yeah. the kids were able to jump on and, and ask some comments and interact. Incredible. And so... Yeah. And, and we'd see, we've seen other organizations doing similar things to the STEM Council, Mark Vital. Yeah. Um, you know, that's an incredible resource as well, where you've got all three school, all three high schools in the community coming together to yeah. try and provide content um, and just ways for people to continue to connect. So I, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention yeah. some of those great opportunities. Um, and if I may, speaking of mentorship, I'd like to give a plug for the Maisie please. program. Yeah. So um, our high school, and um, you know, feel free to look this up on the internet for the, the Maisie program itself, but we've partnered uh, with the Maisie program to provide mentorship to young folks in the city, mm -hmm. um, generally starting their sophomore year. And I just, spe speaking personally, because I've, I've been part of this program, it's, um, it's wonderful. It is a wonderful program, and we're looking for those great role model adults in the community to be able to give back. This is a wonderful opportunity to do it. They'll set you up with a Marlboro High student in a mentorship. They'll be training. The Maisie program is just fantastic. That's incredible. So I can't speak enough about that. Um, so the Maisie website, I don't know if we can link that at some yeah, point in absolutely. there. Absolutely. Um, and obviously, you know, call Marlboro High School if you're interested, and they can set you up with um, with a student to be a mentor for. It's just a great program. So yeah, That's absolutely. Huge. Yeah. So one last thing we do have, we're bumping up against time. It right. always ha it and goes we, like this. And we yeah. have some things to share, some some fun things to share. Yeah, we've got a point. game we're going to play with you. Oh, oh boy. Because <laughs> we do like to have fun. <laughs> we do. But, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the free um, the free lunch that you guys are, and I'm not going to talk about yeah. it. I want you yeah. guys to talk about it. But sure. that's a great program that's running. So can we give a little plug for that as well? So I just want to let everyone know in the community um, the traditional lunch program that we are all used to. So I'm going back to that back in the day so, that we all <laughs> like to use. Right? I think so, it's three so <laughs> that might be buffet. the third or fourth time. <laughs> but what we're what we're doing now is um, lunch and breakfast. There is no cost for any parent in the system. It's incredible. So you don't have to put your you know there's all of the barriers that were in place a long time ago are gone. Mm -hmm. We simply have a very simple service, which is if you would like to eat. We would like to feed you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have great offerings at the um, at each school. Mm -hmm. um, we have breakfast and lunch available. Um, this will save you time in the morning. You won't have we to make a lunch. We all need that. That's for sure. You can get sure. your time. Get yep. get some time back and and eat in our cafeteria. We really want to have as much participation as possible. Yeah. That participation allows us to reinvest in the program. That's awesome. So you have to think about like a lunch program for a school district is outside of our normal budget. Right. It is run by the revenue that we receive from the program. So the more kids that we have participating in the program, the more we can invest in the program itself. You can grow Which it. is fantastic. Right. Um, so again, I just encourage everyone, save yourself some time. Use our lunch program, and, and please, it's a great program, and we're very proud of it. We'd love to see that participation get up to about 75%. Yeah. Just, and again, we talk a lot in terms of economic development about services or things that are provided, you know, in the city. And right. It's another thing. You know, yep. your, your tax dollars, again, growing the pie and yeah. the services that are available to you in your community, this is certainly one of them. Right. And I'll plug that right now by saying Marlboro Public Schools, no, no tuition for preschool, no like, tuition for huge. kindergarten, no bus fee. No athletic fee, no extracurricular fees, nothing. Unbelievable. This is a public school. So I think when we talk, I'm a resident, so this is important to me. Yep. Um, you know, when I look at my tax bill, I get a lot for my, for, for my tax bill. Mm -hmm. I, I know what I'm getting. Absolutely. Um, and when I look at that, I'm, I'm proud of that work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we should be. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's not, that's not the way everywhere. You know, and not every community no. has those types of things available. I tend to say, and sometimes I get in trouble for it, but I tend to say a fee is called, it's tax. Mm -hmm. So just call taxes. Right. So if the school system is charging you for preschool, kindergarten, the bus, athletics, and five other things, it's just taxes. Add that to so your tax bill. Add it to your tax bill. Right. And right. I think in Marlboro, what you're going to find is we're, we are very much a public school and um, we, we very much want kids to participate in all these programs. No and that's why we've removed every barrier we can for every family. It's yeah. incredible. And yeah. President Austin is reminding us that it's the low, that Marlboro has the lowest taxes around. It's a great point. Can't yeah. forget that. Yeah. I know I didn't, don't we have like a map too? We'll, we'll, we do, yeah. yeah. We'll drop that on our social media. Yeah. If you, if we have Looking a map at the of, surrounding communities. The, yeah. 
Yeah, and if you compare the tax rate and then look at the services, yeah. it's not even comparable. Yeah. Right. Um, so take advantage of it, parents. Right. I have four kids. My kids had their first day of school today. And didn't um, you say you spent an hour last I night getting lunches ready? <laughs> I spent an hour. I spent an hour because I had to, you know, you had to pack this. This grade needs th- yep. these type of pencils. And I, yep. By the way, I don't live in Marlboro right now. Right. Trying to get back. Yeah. Someday. We'll I'll get, get you back. back. I'll get back. We'll get you back. Um, so, no, I, I mean, think of the time. Take advantage of it. And also for me too, sending my kids to participate in school, breakfast and lunch, not only is it a time saver, but it also... It gives them the opportunity to try new foods, right. um, you know, and it's not, and it normalizes it too, you know, like if they've never tried like a sloppy Joe or whatever, well, everybody else <laughs> at the table is trying, maybe I'll try maybe it. Maybe I'll do it. I'll send them to school with a dark shirt that day. That's right. <laughs> well, well, that's fine. They'll right. survive, right? Um, can I can I share something with back to on the theme of back to school? Of course you can. So um, I I work if, for those that don't know, I work full time for the Mall Public School Systems. I'm not gonna say this again but i'm just really proud <laughs> i'm really proud Spare us. <laughs> to to I, you know I, I work collaboratively with with the medc um but working from all public schools is just something i'm so proud of and one thing that i decided to do one of my first things in joining full-time this summer was um updating the websites at portrait so we're working on just taking pictures of our leadership team so i just wanted to so we do have this nice little the, picture i think i, of know, Superintendent Bergeron, very nice. I, think I right? know where this is going meredith right oh no he does know where it's going so <laughs> so here's here's the you know the standard portrait but I think, then i think you photoshopped that a little bit. a little bit a little bit a little bit i gotta work on the color and you're a little, you're a little pink here you look like you yeah. got a little tan but then I also went ahead and just, you know, hmm. it's pretty good. There we go. It's pretty good. It. Hold on. The back in the day replay? Is I that had, what we've been talking I had those about? same lasers in, in fourth grade. That was the you option. You the lasers? The la- you check off the laser option. The, well, that was that. the coolest option, right? We yes. never yeah. had that. My parents were like, nope. Well, you know, Joe. Yeah. No, you got to get the lasers. <laughs> so I'm wondering if we can print this, frame this. <laughs> for your desk? You want that for your desk? Uh, yes. Yeah. For those Clearly. tough days. Jill, Ugh. you know, really working hard. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not even the fun game we were going to play with you either. No. Did you do that for everybody? No, just just for just for the superintendent. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, that's you really know, good. Part. The funny thing is, I just I trust her implicitly. Yeah. So when she says yeah, things like "fold your arms and you know put your head to the side a little bit," I just do it. <laughs> I just do what <laughs> she asked, guy, like because I just I trust what she's going to do. But I knew I knew this was coming, was coming. at some Did point. You? It was oh. coming. Yeah. I thought I was being so sneaky. No, not so sneaky. So Jill. transparent. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that, should with we play that. our game? Yeah. Well, is there anything else that we wanted to go over while while we have Superintendent Bergeron? I think we touched on time is flying. I know it goes by really fast. Is there anything that you would like to let me let, let me get off of this picture for yeah. a second? I would appreciate that. Or leave it that. up. I mean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the only other the only other thing I was going to mention, yeah. um, just as a kudos to the school system, the la- last year the um, during the pandemic, the delivery, the food deliveries that were going on oh, yeah. yes. around the city was incredible. Yeah, yeah. that I was, mean, that was uh, like... something we're really proud of. I think by the by the uh, day that we ended, because we also did food delivery this summer, yeah, um, and we were close to four hundred thousand meals. That's wow, incredible! Right, and, and very, I mean, I mean, just unbelievable. Um, you and know, the buses kudos. were going out into the neighborhoods and dropping absolutely food every off, single right? day. And I, I know from from my own neighborhood, living in Marlboro, the kids loved it. They yeah. loved seeing their bus drivers. They would wave to them. They come yeah. out of the house and Some take of the a break. Friendliest people too, and and it meant so much to the bus drivers to see everyone's happy, appreciative yeah. faces. I mean, yeah, it, it was, really brought our community together. It, it was during a great such thing. a difficult time too. People were feeling yeah. so isolated, and yes. you yeah. know that yeah. was. I just thought that was incredible. Like there was a good psychological effect to seeing the buses rolling around the city. Right. And yeah. I, I think it kept people like normalized to say yeah. like we will be back and we'll be back right. soon right yeah um but you know kudos to um our food service department um i hope everyone claps really loudly for them this at the uh the parade. labor day the parade, parade yeah and it gives them the the respect they earn for for all their work yeah. the bus company did a great job with that nrt you know yeah. kudos to them as well um, it was an innovative program, and you know Doug Diaz, our executive director of finance and operation, he just did a wonderful job with that. Absolutely. That's awesome, yeah. as always. Absolutely. All right, so we're gonna end on a fun note. Well, I'm sorry, can I interrupt one more time? Uh, yes. I just wanna I wanna make sure there's a few comments on here. I wanted to to oh, yeah, that's important. To make sure that we that we integrate. Um, so Donica asked the question. Good morning, great info. Go Panthers. Does MA, does MPS collaborate with other 
non-public schools in the city on projects? I just thought that was a good question. I know okay. we have a great relationship between the other school districts. Yeah, yeah occasionally. We, um, in the past, we had collaborated. I know my assistant superintendent, Mary Murphy, yeah. had worked with Immaculate Conception when it was still open awesome. on, on working together for Title I funds and, and on projects. Yeah. Um, I'm always open to it. Yeah. So and the STEM Council, too, yeah. brings in... The, and we just school? actually have a new we have a new school opening up yep. um, right over on uh, it was off drive. Elm Street on Lock Drive. Yep. Yeah. And um, I've been over there Innovation several Academy. times. It's a an unbelievable investment they're putting into that property yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to to see them um, up and running. They are going to have some boarding students as well as having uh, day students as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. And I know our um, our AMSA athletes are on. Like I, I know, um, my my nephew goes to AMSA and he plays for Marlboro High School's hockey team, and oh, that's the cool. collaboration there is just really awesome too. We have yeah. a couple of good uh, co-op teams with yep. with AMSA as well. I know tennis is a co-op, ice hockey is a co-op. Yeah. Um, so appreciate anything that we, we do together. I mean, it's one thing is, is great, and you know, speaking to my colleagues, both Ellen at AMSA and Ernie over at Assabet, mm -hmm. you have three great public schools in Marlboro. Yeah, a lot and of opportunity. Again, a lot thing. of opportunity. A lot of opportunity. Yeah. Right. Right. And then one final question before our, our fun um, Spencer would We're like really to really hyping up the game, you know? I know. <laughs> it's really not that big a deal. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, Spencer would like to know, what is your proudest achievement as superintendent and how did that develop? That's oh, a that's a good question. question. Spencer, yeah. you always always hit me with the hard one, Spencer. <laughs> right. Well, he's a reporter, um, you know? Probably, yeah, I would say, the work we've done over the past couple of years to remove the tuition for preschool. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's going to have the biggest long term impact for for Marlboro students. Access to a high quality preschool we know mm -hmm. will change lives. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Like yeah. The, the research is absolutely 100 percent clear on that. So I think that's mm -hmm. probably the number one. Um, and there's what's a lot the, of other a lot of others. Yeah. What's, the, what's the age for preschool? Is it three? It starts at three years old. I've got a um, two and a half year old. So OK, I'm you're like... getting there. <laughs> you you want to talk to Mr. Burnaby and Perfect. let him know you're coming. <laughs> So that's yeah, at, at three. But it's three years incredible, old. and it, yep. it's a yeah. part day. It's a part day, right? We yeah. have half day and full day programs. That wow. okay? That's yep. just like, and you can opt yeah. into either one, or we're, it's. We're getting a lot of interest in this, so yeah. there's probably going to be a lottery. Yeah. So yeah. just to let people know. Yeah, yeah. that's huge. Noted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, now you know. <laughs> now, now you know. Yeah. That's right. We might, maybe keep it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I get in. Yeah. Okay, I'm just kidding. Anyways, let's go to the game. All right. All right. So you're a Marlboro resident now. Mm, yes. You've been here a couple years. I've been here a couple years. Yep. So we're going to play a game with you of where do you go? Okay. So some of them are food, <laughs> restaurant. We, we really like to plug some of our small business, our restaurant, our hospitality industry right now, trying to give them yeah. as much encouragement as we can. But I think this one's also got a few entertainment, fun, whatever. Yeah. So okay. And don't your overthink gears. it. There's, yeah, no, just there's no hurt feelings. First thing that comes okay. to mind. First thing. First thing comes to mind. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's Friday night after a long week, and you don't want to cook. Wellies. Wellies, yes. Oh, yeah, all right. Yes. I <laughs> love wellies. Was that too quick? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little quick. I love wellies. <laughs> chicken parm night. I think my daughter is two and a half. She has grown up. We have so many photos of her going to chicken parm night at wellies. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but can't get enough. 110 also. But oh, yeah. all right, all right. Maybe I go to That's a much, good one. <laughs> all right. The MPS leadership team is doing a team building exercise. So in, in the past, uh, what we've done is we've gone over to the Apex and yep. we've gone bowling together. This year we actually um, had Trombetta's Farm, thank you very much. Mm. They actually brought the ice cream truck over to the leadership team oh, and everyone cool. got ice cream. Yeah. So thank you again Trombetta's this year, it was fantastic. That's um, cool. Shout out to them for that. And you guys, you guys were bowling? Some year? We, we didn't do bowling this year, but in the past we've done bowling. Yeah. You want to do axe throwing? I want to do axe throwing I, so bad. I've done the axe throwing. It's really fun. It is It is fun. really, really fun. Do you have fun fact, you know, I've done it in heels. Of course you have. Of course I have. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to wear. Obviously. <laughs> Not dangerous at all. It's all good. <laughs> uh, all right. It's a Tuesday night before the school committee meeting, and you want a quick bite. Ugh. Or you want to stop anywhere else. That's a, that's a good one. Let me think about that for a sec. Um, boy, <laughs> usually, I mean, here's, here's the beautiful, the beautiful thing is being in Marlboro. I usually just run home, run home, but I will That's tell not you, an option today. I've gone to, <laughs> I've gone to Chipotle. All I've right. gone to yeah. Chipotle and gotten a burrito. That's and, fair. Chips yeah. and guac can't beat it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I will admit to that. Okay. Hey, that's, that's all right. 
That's we all right. We love Chipotle around here. Spend your dollars in Marlboro. We don't care where you're doing it. That's yeah. awesome. Absolutely. Yep. All right. It's Sunday of graduation week, and you're looking to celebrate. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Um, Sunday of graduation week. I'm usually you're dealing probably... with my sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> Your mask burn? I'm looking, yes. Oh, I wish I had a picture of it. It was uh, so was, great. You had a that mask burn? Uh, yeah, that, this two year, years the ago. Year before. Yeah. Ooh, I, it was uh, something. It was, we'll it was a little, little rough. Yeah. Sunday of graduation, looking to celebrate. That's a good one. You know what? One of the places that my wife and I love to go is uh, Aviva. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, it, oh, the yeah. bar is so fantastic. Good. It's a great place to grab a quick meal. It's great. Great Sorry. people. Great. Yeah. You know yeah. what's my favorite thing to get there? Um, well, two things. There's the patata salad, or no, um, pizza, like some type of. Oh yeah, they I'm fry the dough. Wrong. So good. And then the salmon there. I'm telling you, order the salmon. It's Capers delicious. over spaghetti squash. It's so so good. good. So yeah. good. Yeah. They also have a really good beer, craft beer list. Mm. Mm. And and they recently just started doing wine on tap. Wine on yes, tap, which is kind of cool. Is that like really? wine in a box? Yeah. No, it, no, it's wine like. On yeah, it's not like a Franzia Friday. <laughs> Wait, nothing wrong. With nothing wrong with that, but no, it's better than that. Wine on tap. I got to cool. I got to check that out. All right, last question. Last one. Okay. It's a half day before the holiday weekend. Half day before holiday weekend. Okay, so that's Friday. Yeah, like are yeah. you shopping or are you going out to eat or what are you doing? Uh, I say this Friday probably my dad is coming down from New Hampshire. He's going to spend some time. So I'm going to think about where I'm going to take my dad. I right. probably say I probably, if I could, take him out to lunch. If I if I can go there, I go double teas. Yeah. Mm. Good meal. Yep. And then I take him over. I think we're having a scrimmage Friday night. Okay. For the football team. Yeah. So I think double teas in a in a football scrimmage is a pretty good weekend. Sounds like a hell of a Friday awesome. night. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's that's good. Is it bad that I picked only restaurants? <laughs> no. I, I guess it's kind of like telling. I think your questions led you there. They, well, yeah. Uh, Hey, yeah. I like okay. shout out to all of our restaurants. <laughs> I am who I am. Keep going. <laughs> eat out. We love it. It's awesome. And fun fact, when you eat out in Marlboro, you're, there's a tax. The meals tax goes right back into our parks and fields. That's right. right. And so, I, I get comments all the time, uh, consistently. Uh, a lot of my cousins live in the areas. They have kids who go to different school systems. They come to Marlboro to play sports. And the number one comment is, how do you get these fields? Yeah. yeah. So thank you, City Council. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, yeah. Michael Bergeron, for dying out so much. <laughs> I guess I'm supporting some of the bond payments the field, right there. Right? <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, We're out of time. We're out of time. We're having so much fun. We need to let you go. I don't get, get to back. ask any questions. No. Well, if you want to, just real quick, go ahead. All right. One question. All right. Favorite high school teacher, Jill. Oh, Bruce Kurth. Bruce Carr. Well, but I didn't go to high school here. That's okay. We're, right. throw, we're throwing a shout out to teachers today. All right. So I am going to say Mrs. Penza, who Mrs. Penza. I am friends with on Facebook. So maybe she watches this. We'll find out. But my French teacher in high school, still stay in touch with her to this day. Just creme uh, de la creme. Madame. All right. Madame Penza. Zutelor. That's right. What about you? <laughs> Mike Lozo. Great teacher. Yeah. Great teacher. Loved him. So good. What did he okay. teach? <laughs> he was my so he was my freshman football coach. Nice. He was also my phys ed teacher. And he might have been the only adult in that building who could keep me in line. Well, so that's a that's a task, <laughs> great. right? <laughs> great guy. All right, so, that was your one question. That was, that was it. it. That was Throwing it. Throwing a shout out to teachers. Awesome. Yeah. All right, we'll let you get back to your first day of school. All right, heading over to Kane School. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. This was a lot of fun. Um, thank you for joining us as well, and we look forward to seeing you back the. F- not it is the first week of september so the 15th the third wednesday of september and we are going to have kevin kiros from mass office of business development to talk a little bit about incentives statewide incentives and how we work together with them on a state level Um, so with that happy wednesday everybody have a great day